everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Dr. Laura Mock here again today. Today we are going to be talking about emotional intelligence and how this one thing can be a huge asset to your practice or a giant liability. And we're going to be talking about the difference and why it's so important. But first, a little bit of business. Did you guys know that I got interviewed by Gary Takis? Gary Takis, for those of you who don't know, is the original dental podcaster, and he heard one of my videos and immediately invited me onto his show. It was the video about embracing rejection. Just in case you haven't heard that one yet, it is one of my most popular videos. And so anyway, his uh, interview with me was released last week, and I will be including a link to his show just in case you want to listen to it. Um, the link will be to the webpage that plays the podcast, but if you're a regular podcast listener, you can find him um, online, like iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, all those different ones. He's on there, and his podcast is called The Thriving Dentist Show. That's easier to find than Gary Takis, because Takis is spelled kind of different, right, Gary? Sorry, it is. Um, so anyway, I would be thrilled if you head on over there and take a listen to it. Um, I, it was such a thrill, I have to say. I was so blown away. He's so smart. And he said some really nice things about me, which ugh, I really appreciated because, you know, it's been, it hasn't been six months even since I started this YouTube channel. And um, when I first started, I was just basically talking to nobody. So it was nice to get some feedback and some encouragement from somebody who uh, is a lot farther into the industry. Anywho, back to our subject. We are going to be talking about emotional intelligence today. And the reason that we're talking about it is because I took the advice of another dentist. His name is Dr. Brett Kessler. And actually, I learned about him on another Gary Takis um, podcast because Brett Kessler does triathlons and he just did an Ironman last year and now this year he gets to do it again in Kona World Championship. Fancy, fancy. Anyway, I was talking to Brett and he strongly suggested that I read this book by Daniel Goldman and it's called Primal Leadership. So I've been reading that book this week and I was really struck with this one principle of how important it is as leaders to be emotionally intelligent. So that's what we're going to be chatting with. So let's just picture you. You're ready for the day. You've got your hand pieces. You've got your dental degree. You've got all your equipment and your supplies and your schedule. And there's one thing that's always going to be there. And that is your mood. And if it's a bad mood, we're going to talk about what that does to your practice and your patients. And if it's a good mood, we're going to talk about the benefits to that. A leader's mood can really make or break a business. I remember my first job that I ever had, you guys, when I was 14, I started working at Wendy's and I would make those hamburgers. And um, actually, first I was in charge of the salad bar, which was back when they actually had a salad bar at Wendy's. And we took the kale. That was back when you didn't even eat kale. It was a decorative vegetable that we would put around the edge next to the ice, and it was my job to take care of the kale. And the rest of the, most of the salad bar was just like buckets of um, macaroni salad and potato salad, and the lettuce that was on there was just like chopped up crap, you know, the iceberg lettuce. And there were a few precious tomatoes on there and some sliced cucumbers, and, and then the rest of it, you know, jello and shredded carrots. Anyway. Um, I worked at Wendy's and um, we had this manager. He was the store manager and his, his name was Carl. And Carl was such a great motivator because he would come down through the line and he would give everybody high fives and tell them what a great job they were doing and the goal that we were working towards as far as how quickly we could serve everybody. And he'd be like, mayonnaise, ketchup, pickin', pickle, onion, tomatoes, lettuce, mustard. That's right. Woo! And <laughs> Looking back on it, it was kind of silly, but actually strangely effective because then we'd all get super excited about making our burgers and stuff. I'm sure all of you guys have had a, a, a supervisor like that that made you feel inspired and excited about your job, even if it was just 
lining the kale around the salad bar. And then today when I was on my bike ride today, my husband was telling me about a boss that he had once where um, there were so many temper tantrums and so much selfishness and bad moods from that that boss that everybody just avoided him and nobody told him if there was a problem and everyone was just punching the clock and nobody cared about outcomes. They were just there to do what they had to do to get their paycheck. So you can kind of see the difference and a lot of that has to do with how Carl could get excited and then share his excitement with the rest of the team and this other guy didn't give a shit. And it's too bad because he had all these good people who would have been happy to follow some excellent leadership, but he, they weren't getting that excellent leadership. So now we get to the part of my video where I tell you some of the mistakes that I personally have made in this arena. So, you know, I mean, let's be real. Sometimes when you're a mom and a dentist and the owner of your practice, you can get a little overwhelmed. So I'm gonna have compassion on myself while I tell you some of the mistakes that I have made. Um, it's, I think, very helpful for me to understand what I've done in the past. Luckily, I have really good team members who have told me when I've messed up a time or two. <laughs> so um, at the end of the day, we have a team meeting. It's a really short meeting at the end of the day where we review what we accomplished and we thank each other um, for the teamwork that we had. It's a wonderful meeting, but I'm gonna let you know about two months ago, my team took away my responsibility to run that meeting. <laughs> and that is because at the end of the day, I've been running so hard that I would just lean up against the wall and be like, oh my gosh, you guys, that was so hard. And I'd be all tired and it wouldn't take the energy to thank them properly for what they did that day. So now we have a rotating schedule where each of the um, employees takes turn being the leader in the meeting. And also, since I have been properly uh, corrected on that, I have done a much better job of doing my part too thank them instead of being a Debbie Downer. So that's the first thing that I want to mention to you. Next one is kind of similar. We run a bonus system that is based on um, the total collections for the office for about a month at a time. And um, there have been times when even though my team has bonused, and when I say bonus, I mean in the hundreds of dollars, sometimes over 500, I have said, as we're talking about how much bonus they got, well, at least we kept the lights on this time, or it's not as much as I would like for you to get, but at least you got something. <laughs> and once again, Thanks to my team, I have been informed that that is not an appropriate way to celebrate that they got these big bonuses. I mean, come on, Laura, you can do better than that. Okay, this is my worst one because this one sets the tone for the whole day, Laura. I mean, come on. There have been multiple times when I have showed up at the beginning of the day. We have a meeting at the beginning of the day too. It's a little bit more in depth, talk about our patient's needs, talk about where we think we're gonna run into challenges in the day and problem solve while we're there, which is excellent. And I come in, make, I'm just making a little conversation and I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, I had insomnia last night, which is something I deal with from one to four. And I always feel like I have to tell them like the number of hours that <laughs> I suffered. And why am I doing that? I guess it's because I want somebody to feel bad for me but if I'm thinking about my higher goal, my higher goal is that I am at work today. I am there to earn some money, to make some dollars. And if I think that it's going to be an effective method for me to just tell them about my insomnia or like how much Mike snored last night, then I'm not doing it right. 
And I bet all of you guys can think of how I could have done that a little bit better. So if you want to, wait, I have one more thing to say. Two more things before I give some suggestions. Have you ever gone into a medical practice where you can just tell the moment that you're in there that the leadership ain't good or they aren't, at least they aren't giving the, um, the employees the time of day. Nobody wants to say hello to you. They're not answering the phone nicely. They just say, okay, have a seat, mm, you know. And if we don't want our practices to be like that, we have to step up in this thing, which is our mood. We don't want to have our patients feeling like they're not getting any empathy or welcoming from our team because then we are just a commodity. If, if they're not getting treated special in our practices, then they can go get a cheaper crown or a cheaper filling down the street. If we want to make our practice so that people don't think of our services as a commodity, we have to be there for our patients. And anyway, it's more fun to be that way. It's so much more satisfying to be a dentist and have a dental team where you know that you are really spoiling your patients. Okay, one more example. Have you ever just walked into a room and you already knew that there was a bad conversation happening in that room? Even if you didn't even hear any words, you just knew. And the reason that you knew is because among humans, emotions are contagious. Again, we are pack animals. So if we are getting that vibe, even if we haven't heard any words, it's because we're looking at those nonverbals and it tells a lot. So if you want to improve how you lead your team and also how you manage your own mood, I, I do have some quick suggestions for you before the end of this video. Now, I just want to warn you before I give you these um, suggestions, you need to be genuine. I got to tell you, my assistants especially are like uh, mood sleuths. Like it takes them about a half a second before they know if I'm faking it. They absolutely know if I'm, if I'm unhappy. So make sure you're being genuine when you do these things. The first of all is... Um, to introduce laughter into your practice. I keep thinking that I should start our huddles with something funny. Um, I think I'm going to start doing that because laughter is the most contagious emotion that you can experience. And even if you see someone laughing, even if it's just a picture of someone laughing, you're probably going to smile and you can't help it. It's that pack animal thing. You're going to feel the same thing as the people around you. So if you're purposefully introducing laughter into your team meetings, then everyone's going to be happier. Next is to put on your empathy hat. It's really a lot easier to think about how the people around you are feeling if you're thinking that way and you're picturing, okay, this person might be frustrated right now because I just told them they couldn't have that extra time off or whatever. But if they feel like you understand them, then it's a lot easier on their mood and the, in the emotional um, situation in the room. The next one is to make sure that you're celebrating achievements. So um, in our practice, that's part of our evening huddle. Um, we celebrate when we um, sell some treatment or when we do some extra care that day. We celebrate the teamwork that happened to make something occur that maybe was going to be a challenge. Um, we make sure that we're going, thank you, that was awesome, good job, wow, the, my team gets so much done in one day, and we're always trying to emphasize those achievements. And also, this is really important, is just to make sure you're giving each one of your employees a sincere thank you, because so it's a really big deal to be appreciated, and not being appreciated is the number one reason why team members will seek a different employment situation. And this one I need to learn for it from myself is to get enough sleep because I don't know about you, um, but I'm like a crabby baby if I don't get enough sleep and it's a lot harder for me to be nice and to feel nice. So make sure you're going to bed on time. And this last one, maybe it's a plug for myself, but I'm going to say it anyway because I know it's true. 
Um, if you notice that your brain is focusing on scarcity and it's getting and it's hard to pull yourself out of that, you can seek some coaching. I've got some really good tools that are easy to use and um, easy to learn. It just takes a little bit of persistence to pull yourself out of some of that scarcity. Um, like, I mean, I had a scarcity slump a year ago and I'm out of it. And it's totally because of these coaching tools that I've learned. So you can um, talk to me or you can also just listen to some of the coaches that you like, um, either on YouTube or podcasts and things like that. And that's free. So you can do that anytime. And that is all that I have for you today, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking with me until the end of my podcast. And um, I just want to remind you that it is not too late to get a free session with me. You want to go to my website and just click on the little button that says um, free coaching session. And I'd love to hear from you. And I, like I said in the last video, I'll be excited if you sign up for more coaching. But even if you don't, I will still really love talking to you and I'll be thrilled that you signed up for it because I just really love coaching. And um, if all I do is free coaching sessions for the next year, I'm still going to love it. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.